Hey, what's up? I'm Norris. Welcome back to another Saw Long. Today we're going to be working on my latest pattern design with Mimi G Men's Simplicity Pattern 9338. Now I love this pattern because there are cargo pants with cargo pockets on the front and the side and you have the option to do shorts and it has a slight drop crotch. Now if you're new to sewing or just need a refresher course, you can click the Sewing Basics video linked in the description box below. If you need more help than that, I would recommend you head over to SewingAcademy.com because sewing with patterns do require a certain level of sewing skills. So if you sign up for our free trial, you get the first five courses with no charge. Now let's get started. I will be doing view A, which is the cargo pant because of all the details with the pockets. The shorts are pretty simple. So if you look on the back, um, you want to make sure that you look at the finished garments and you want to measure your hips. Now when it comes to a lot of men's garments, we, we really don't use our hip measurements that much, but it's very important for you to do your hip measurement and and then according to whatever the finished garment is, if you have enough ease, you can go up and see what size you want to use, okay? Um, all the notions up, up here, you can use a denim, a twill, um, tinsel, and also for the shorts, obviously, I have faux leather, and you can use the same type of fabric for the shorts that you use for the pants as well. And when it comes to all the supplies, I'll go over that a little bit later. So now with the pattern pieces, we're going to be using pattern piece number two. You wanna cut eight out of fabric and four out of interfacing. The reason why we're doing eight is because we have four different pockets that we need um, this flap for. Pattern piece number four, which is the pocket gusset. Pattern piece number three, which is the pocket. You're gonna cut four of these. And also with the, with the gusset, you're gonna cut two out of fabric. Just cut four of these, and then you're gonna cut four of the side pocket. Now, you don't necessarily have to put these pockets on to the pants because of the cargo pockets that we have, but I like the additional two pockets on the side seam. Um, it just adds more pockets for the actual garment. Pattern piece number six, which is the welt. You wanna cut one of out of interfacing and one out of fabric. Pattern piece number seven, you're gonna cut one of these. This is the back pocket. And then we have pattern piece number one, which is the front. You're gonna cut two of these. Pattern piece number 11 is the lower front. You're gonna cut two of these. Pattern piece number five is the back. You're gonna cut two of these as well. And then last but not least, we have pattern piece number 12. It's the lower back, and you're also gonna cut two of these. Now before I continue, I just wanna show you that there's a lot of markings because of the placement of the pockets. And it's very important for you to trace these markings onto your actual garment. So when you place your pockets, they're not crooked or just look weird um, when you finish your garment. And also it's the corners of some of your lower pieces with that curve or your side cargo pocket has to be placed. So you wanna be mindful of all the different uh, markings, transfer every single detail. It's gonna take a little time, but trust me, when you put everything in the right place, you're gonna be satisfied at the end. Okay, so for the supplies, you're gonna need one inch elastic and three eighths of an inch elastic. Um, you're gonna need at least two packs of the one inch because it's about 30 inches um, each pack. So they give you a total of like 60 inches, enough for um, the two rows that we need. And you're only gonna need one pack for the three eighths of an inch. Um, that's a total of two yards, so that is plenty. Um, you're also some, going to need some type of um, belting or rope um, for um, just a style aesthetic if you want that. Um, that's how we have it in the actual pattern cover as you can see right here. And then also you're gonna need snaps. Um, you probably can't tell from here, but if you look right here, you do two, see two snaps, but my snaps are, go, are going to be hidden snaps. So if you haven't done hidden snaps, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, but you don't have to do hidden snaps if you don't want to. And I'll let you know when you should be putting the hidden snaps in opposed to just waiting to the end to put them in um, at the very last step. All right, so now that you have all your supplies, we can begin sewing. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna prep our pockets. The front cargo pocket and also the side part cargo pocket. Now the front cargo pocket has a gusset. This is the gusset here. And on the unnotched side, there's one notch in the center. On the unnotched side, you want to turn that in and press it um, the seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so once you do that, you have it pressed, we're gonna go ahead and line it up on the edge of the pocket, and we're going to pin all the way around. Now before you go too far down, there's a notch 
that you should line up at the center with that notch is on the bottom of the pocket. So when it comes to this curve, you might have to cut a few slits just so it can spread out and reach all the way around that curve. And then now it spreads a little bit and you're able to evenly pin it. Okay, now we're going to head to the machine and we're just going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around across the bottom and then up the other side. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we've stitched all the way around, I went ahead and pressed the seams towards the, the middle of the pocket. And then now I'm just gonna trim some of this off. I'm gonna trim it down to about three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch depending on how much you want. Okay, now that we've trimmed some of that access um, seam allowance, we're going to turn it to the top and we're just going to top stitch, holding that seam allowance to the middle all the way around. So when you top stitch, you want to be at least a quarter inch away from that seam. So just top stitch all the way around and until you get to the other side. Okay, so if you look closely, I went ahead and top stitch, as you can see, all the way around. And then now I'm going to turn it over to the wrong side and that pressed in seam allowance that you can see right here, I went ahead and opened it up and then I turned down a quarter inch on the top and I pressed it. Now, once I do that, you're going to um, go to your fold line. You should have markings. I put a little notch to show me where my fold line is. So you want to fold that down like that all the way across. Now go ahead and give that a good press and we'll continue. Okay, now that we gave this a good press, it's laying flat, you want to turn it over and we're basically gonna top stitch, keeping this side here down. So just go ahead and just do a straight stitch. Um, this is about an inch, so you wanna be just under an inch so you can catch the bottom of this. Okay, moving along, um, as you can see, we went ahead and top stitch all the way across, even on um, the sides that's folded in. So once you do that, you want to fold that seam allowance back in. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit of this seam allowance off because we're about to place it onto um, our front piece. So um, you can leave it if you want, but I'd rather not have all this seam allowance uh, within my pocket. Okay, so now when it comes to the placement, the end, the edge of this fold line right here should match up to your marking. So as you can see, my markings are right here and you want to follow that as best you can. So I'm going to place the edge of that fold and then I'm going to start pinning. So I'm gonna turn this to the side a little bit just so I can pin, pin better. So I like to do one side at a time. Okay, so as you can see, I have it pinned and we're just going to add stitch as close as you can get to the edge, starting on one side, going across the bottom, around the curves, and ending up on the other side. So just add stitch that down, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, moving along, as you can see, we have our pocket stitched onto our front. And what I do at the side, I just find that middle and I press it over and I press it down so it can lay flat towards the top. And then the same thing to the other side. You just want to press it in and then press it and then keep the bottom puffed out with that 3D effect. Um, next, we're going to work on the, the flap. So I have two pieces. One piece is interface all the way across, which is going to be the top um, flap. And then the flap that's underneath is going to be where I put my hidden snaps at. So that's why you see um, the two interfacing um, placements on where um, the snaps are going to go. Just so you know, for future references, whenever you're cutting into or making holes into your fabric, you want to reinforce that fabric with interfacing. So because I'm doing hinge snaps and the snaps are not going through the top piece and only going through the, the bottom, I want to have a little bit more support than just this one piece of um, layered fabric. And sometimes I actually use another piece of squared fabric to um, go on top of that if the fabric was really light. So 
What we're gonna do with right side facing, we're going to pin if you need to. It don't hurt to pin a few places. Okay, so when, once you have it pinned, we're going to stitch starting on one side and across the bottom and up the other side. We're going to keep the top open and we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I stitch uh, where we need it to, I'm going to go ahead and trim this down to about a quarter inch. All right, so just turn it right side out. You know what I'm saying? Take your finger and press that seam out. And then once you get it really good, you want to go ahead and give this a good press. Okay, so after I gave it a good press, I went ahead and top stitch across the sides and then the bottom, as you can see right here. Okay, so the next step is adding the snaps. Now you can put them on top if you want to and just poke a hole all the way through and just put them on the way um, your, your snaps are directing you to. But if you want them to be hitting, you want to open this up. And once you open it up, you should have your marking onto that square piece of interfacing as you can see right here. And basically I just poke a little hole, nice size hole. And then what I do, I take a snap. The snap that you would normally put on top like that, you're gonna do the same thing, but put it underneath. You're just gonna sandwich it in between. So keep it with the right side face up of the top of the snap. And then push the other side through the hole. And if you need to make the hole bigger, bigger, you can just cut a little bit. Okay, so just like that. And then basically what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take the female piece and just lay it on top. And then mine's come with a little um, support that you put up under it, so when you're hammering, it can be effective. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my snap in place. Okay. So now we have a snap added, but you don't see it on the right side. It's only going to be on the bottom side. So that's how you put in a hinge snap. So you want to do the other snap the same way, and then we'll attach it to our front piece. Okay, now that both of my snaps are added, I went ahead and I marked three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge here on the top. Now, um, the placement for the instructions would tell you five eighths of an inch, but I'm gonna bring mine down just a little bit because I want the flap to come down further on my actual pocket. So for instance, if it's at three eighths of an inch from the edge, when I fold down, it'll cover that full on top stitch, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to just line up the marking that I have with the marking that's onto my pattern. And I'm going to pin, but I'm not going to pin sideways, I'm going to pin vertical. That's just going to help me navigate when I'm up under the machine. Okay. So now I'm going to head over to the machine and we're just going to do a regular straight stitch. We're going to start here on this side and stitch all the way until we get to the other side. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have this stitched down, as you can see right here, before I turn this over and press it and then top stitch, I wanna trim a little bit of this um, seam allowance off. I'm gonna trim it down to about uh, a quarter inch. So now I'm just going to press this down, give it a good press at the um, pressing table, and then we're just gonna to top stitch a quarter inch away from the top. So just top stitch it all the way down and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, so once you have that top stitching across the top here, um, the one last thing to do is just add the snaps on um, the other end of your pocket, which is, which is right here. Um, so a little trick that I do, which is pretty helpful, um, what I do is I push down onto my snap and it prints a circle onto my garment. So I just put a little dot right there in the center and that'll put an exact placement on where I need the snap to be. And then do the other one the same way, push down and then right in the center. Because if you go off the markings from your actual pattern piece, the way you place something might be a little off, but this right here gives you an exact placement. So go ahead and add your snaps and we'll continue. Okay, now when your snaps are added, you can just snap them together, just secure your pocket and you want to do your other pocket and your flap to your other front piece 
the same exact way. Just do that same entire process all over again for your other front piece. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our um, side cargo pocket. We just did the front cargo pocket, and, but this one is a little different, but the pattern piece is the exact same. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold across the top and we're going to press a quarter inch. Um, now, I just wanna point out that we're not gonna actually be putting it on just yet. I just want to do it and have it ready so once we get to that step, we can just go ahead and um, stitch it on. So once we press across um, a quarter inch across the top, you want to turn it right side up and then at, the, at your fold line down here, you want to fold it onto itself and just give it a pin to hold it in place and then do the same exact thing on the other side. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna head over to the machine and we're just going to stitch starting at the fold at the top, stitching all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around and then stopping up here on the other side. Now you wanna do that, come back and we'll continue. All right, so you can see I went ahead and stitched from the top all the way up to the other side and uh, next we have to do some gathering stitches. So you want to turn um, you're stitching to the highest length on your machine. Starting right before you get into the curve right down the side, you want to place um, your needle about a quarter inch away from that stitching we have, from the inside. So you just want to back stitch at the beginning, but not at the end. So once you get out of that curve, you can lift your needle up and pull your threads. Okay, so a quarter inch away from that one, we're gonna do the same exact thing. Backstage at the beginning, but not at the end. Lift your knee up, pull your threads, all right? And then next, you're going to do the exact same gathering stitches on the other side. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down about a quarter inch, just past where that fold is at the corner. Then I'm just going to cut that off. And then the same thing to the other side. All right, so it should look a little bit just like this. Now once I do that, I'm going to turn it right side out and then poke up my corners. All right. And then you can just give this a good press. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling our threads to gather at the bottom. So now I'm just working on one curve. So I'm just going to pull and gather that just a little bit, just so we could form a curve. So not too tight, not too loose. And then once you get it to where it is, you can put it in position, take it to your pressing table and give it a good press. And then now I'm going to do the other side the same way. And because we did that stitching, that first stitching all the way around, we have a place where we know where it should fold at which is a guide. So now that we have that guide, you just line it up and then just give it a good press. So now take it over to your pressing table and press it. Okay, now that we gave it a really good press, everything lays flat, and I went ahead and top stitch across the top and you see it catches the other end. And um, the last thing I'm going to do is trim off until about a quarter inch of the seam allowance. Okay, so now this pocket is ready for when we get to that step. So just take it, put it somewhere safely, don't mistake it for trash, and uh, we will attach it when it's time. Okay, so before starting with the weld pocket, you wanna make sure that you have a strip of interfacing right where you're gonna be um, adding the weld. So when you cut and slash, you have a little bit more stability um, on your back of your fabric. Okay, next we're gonna work on the back welt pocket. All right, so you have um, option to put it on your left side or your right side, or you can do both. You just have to know you have to double up, you have to do cut two of these and then two of these if you want to um, 
have a wealth pocket on both sides. What I like to say is, if you're that guy that reached for your back left pocket for your wallet, put it on your left side. If you're the guy that use your right hand to get your wallet off your left, left back pocket, put it on your put on your left side. I mean, put it on your right side. So, um, the first step, you want to do a basing stitch across the top line. Now, that's going to be a guide for later, but you do want to do that. And then next, I'm going to do something a little different. So what I went ahead and did was um, I folded the welt in half, as you can see right here, folded in half, and then I marked where the 3 eighths of an inch line is because it's a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I did the same thing for the back of my um, pattern piece. Now what I want to do is I want to line that up, and now you have a notch in the center and then a notch in the center of your uh, welt pocket. Now if you match it up, once you layer the welt pocket on the bottom and then the lining on top, and if you have it flush across the top, everything else should pretty much match up. So what you want to do is you want to head to the machine and you're just going to base this down from one dot to the other dot. You don't want to go all the way to the edge, just from one dot all the way until you get to the other dot. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now that we have um, this base down with the welt on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and use that basing stitch as a guide to match up on that bottom line on our bounding box. Okay, so basically you want to make sure in the corner of that box is where you have the dot um, marking placed. And then I'm just going to pin this as I go. Okay, so now that I have this in place, we're going to stitch from one dot to the other dot, but this time it's not going to be a basing stitch. We're going to actually stitch this down, okay? So just follow that existing stitching line with a regular stitch. Okay, so we're back from the machine, and we've stitched across from dot to dot, and then now we're going to go ahead and cut into this. Now, hold your breath, make sure you do a great cut, and um, we do everything precise. So I just like to pinch the fabric a little bit and then cut right in the center. And then I do one at a time. I go down one side and then about five eighths of an inch from the actual end of the box. I turn. And instead of going to the end of the box, you wanna to go to where your stitching stop because it might be a little off. So once you go to your stitching, you're in a, in a great place. And then the same with the top. You just want to cut right where that stitching ends. And it might not be at the corner of your box because everything is not always perfect. So down the other side, about five, eight, five eighths of an inch away from the end of that box, you want to turn at the back and then cut into where your, where your um, stitching stops. And that's going to create a little triangle cutout. Okay, so after we do that, we're going to turn this into the inside. So once you turn it to the inside, it's going to look like this on one side before you press it. And then on this side, it's going to look like that. So go ahead and give this a good press and we'll continue. Okay, now that I gave this a good press, you want to make sure that your triangles are pressed outward if you look like this. And then the same thing to the other side, you should see it right here. And then the top where we, top where we um, base this at, you want to pinch and fold that and turn that to the inside so you can start seeing a little bit um, of how that welt pocket is gonna come to life. So next, we're going to do is we're going to turn this over. And then at the top of this fabric, I'm just going to line this up with the top, as you can see right here. And I'm just going to pin. Pin there. And then also, I'm going to pin. You can see that side. I'm going to pin right here and that side right there. And then one more on the other side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're going to turn this up and then head to the machine and we're just gonna follow that basing stitch that we did earlier. 
all the way across. Okay, so during this step, you want to make sure that you that you don't catch the top of that welt. So just make sure that welt is out the way underneath, and then line this up as straight as you can. You're going to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, after we do that, since we still at the machine, we're going to turn the side of this back like that. And then now we're just going to stitch down the side using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And it might just be a little off depending on how we, how you um, lined it up. You can see mine's just a little off, but it's not going to make much difference once we sew it up. So you have to catch that triangle. And then now we're going to sew the other side the same exact way, starting from the bottom and going up. Okay, so this is how it looks on one side, and then once you give it a good press, this is how your welt pocket looks on the other side. So now that we have our back welt pocket done, we're gonna continue. Okay, so before we start attaching our lower front to our top front and our lower back to our top back, we have to do darks and also the pleats for our front um, bottom pieces. Now this right here is to draw a little bit more interest, a uh, little style detail to our actual front of the pant. So basically what you want to do is you want to trace off your darts. We, did, we have, we've done darts before. Um, you want to put one in the center so you know where to stop. And then just line this up and making sure that you have the pin going through both lines on both sides. All right. And then the same thing for this one. Okay, so when it comes to the pleat, you just want to grab that and make sure the lines match up on both sides and then pin it all the way through. All right, and I'll put one more in there. All right, so now once you have everything pinned, we can head to the machine and we can stitch these down. All right, so for those that are not uh, familiar with darts or even pleats, I'm gonna just do this one time to show you. So you wanna go ahead and Start on, a, on, on the outside, and we're going to back stitch at the beginning, but not at the end of the dart. We're just going to follow that line, and then once we get to that dot, we're just going to sew off, lift your needle up, and pull your threads. And then after you do that, you just want to tie a knot. Okay, once you have a couple of knots, you're done with that dart. You wanna do the other dart the same way. And then now when it comes to our pleat, it's gonna be a little different. We're just going to sew um, with a back seat at the beginning and also at the end. Just making sure that we stop at the end of that, um, of that pleat. Right, so you want to do the other pleat the same exact way. Okay, once you have your darts and your pleats done, you want to press your darts up and also your pleats. And when you turn it to the front, you'll get a nice little detail here, and then you'll have a pleat, which is right here. All right, so now that we have this done, we go ahead and grab our front piece. And with right sides facing, we can turn it over onto itself just like this. And I like to make sure that I have that marking for the pocket placement lined up too. So I kind of want to do that and then also match up. Uh, for some reason, I think the placements for uh, the double notch is a little off. So if it don't line up, um, don't worry about that. Um, you can, it still reaches to both sides. All right, so the seam allowance for 
For this, it's three-fourths of an inch. So head to the machine and just stitch all the way across using three-fourths of an inch. So while we're at the machine, you wanna go ahead and do your back piece the same way. You should have done all your markings. And the, the double notch does match up for your back pieces. Okay, so the seam allowance for the back, um, attaching the lower and, and the upper back to each other is three fourths of an inch as well. So go ahead and do your, your back and then also do your front and come back and we'll continue. Okay, as you can see, I attached it and I went ahead and I surged off the end, the raw edge, and then I top stitch a quarter inch away from um, that seam. And then I did the, also did the same thing for the back piece. Now you want to do your other front and your other back the same exact way. And then once you do that, um, if you want to put your side seam pockets um, in addition uh, to the other pockets that we have, um, now is the time to actually do that. So I'm actually going to um, have all seven pockets on these pair of pants. So what you wanna do first, you wanna grab your um, side seam pocket bag. Don't forget to have your markings here. Um, place that there where your notches are and then you're gonna pin. Then the pin a few more times. Just like that. So this is our front piece on the side. And then now for the back, we're gonna do the same exact thing. So go ahead and grab this. There should be a notch that matches up for your pocket. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch, starting at the, at the bottom of that pocket bag all the way up to the top using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then the same thing for the front, starting from the top, going down using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, I went ahead and surged down that um, outside seam right there, just to have, it's just so it could be clean. And then I just gave it a good press with the seam allowance towards the pocket. Um, so I did the back the same exact way. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to place this onto each other, right sides facing. I got one front on top of one back. So now what I'm going to do first, I'm gonna make sure that seam is in the same exact place and then I'm gonna pin. And then also I'm going to put a pin where that marking is so I know where to stop. And then the same thing down here. And then we're gonna continue pinning, making sure that that seam right there matches up perfectly. You don't want your seams off. And then just continue pinning down the pant leg on the outside seam. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start at the top using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the edge of that seam allowance there. So if you take your seam gauge, you start from the edge of that seam, you can mark where 5 eighths of an inch is when you get to your sewing machine. So 5 eighths of an inch, you're gonna come and then you wanna back stitch and break your threads where your marking is, and then you wanna lift up your needle and then you wanna start where it picks back up at your second marking. So you wanna back stitch at the beginning and then you wanna sew down the rest of your pant leg down to the hem. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, I went ahead and um, did my stitching and I also went ahead and stitched all around my pocket bag right here using five eighths of an inch seam allowance and then I just searched that off. So that's simple, super simple. Just stitch around five eighths of an inch and then if you have a surgeon, you can clean it up. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little cut into my back seam. Now I'm just cutting to that back seam so I can open up that side seam and give it a good press because the pocket front is going to be brought over to the front. So I'll show you this right here is the front of the actual pant. So you want that pocket bag to flip over to the front. So once you have it in place, I'm gonna go ahead and base across the top. So base it across the top, 
and then you will have that pocket bag to the front. Okay, so this next step is going to be optional. I'm basically going to top stitch where the top of the pocket is and go in. The direction says you can go in um, a half inch, but I'm only, I'm only gonna do three eighths of an inch. Basically top stitching um, three eighths of an inch up um, where the pocket opening is, go all the way down and then close it out at the bottom of the pocket. Now, you don't wanna stitch the pocket closed, so you're only gonna be working on the front piece of the pocket opening. Okay, so this right here is gonna take a little bit of maneuvering. You wanna start at the top of your pocket opening. So I'm basically gonna take the top and I'm going to pull it so the top can lay flat. And I'm back to the beginning. And once I get three eighths of an inch, I'm going to turn. And then now I'm going to go straight down and make sure their back piece is put out the way. Okay, so once you approach that bottom, just want to pivot one last time and then close it out. Back stitch a few times. And then now you have a top stitch pocket opening. Okay, one last thing I do to secure both ends when I um, just stitch, just top stitch the pocket opening, I go to the very top and then with a couple of zigzag stitches, I just secure it, this is back and forth. All right, just like that. Then we'll move down to the bottom of it and do the same exact thing. Okay, just so you can get a little, a better look at it, you can see the zigzag here and the zigzag here. And then you have the top stitching where the opening is on that side seam pocket. Okay, so now we're gonna move along and we're gonna attach our um, side cargo pocket onto our side. So we have these already made. So you wanna go ahead and place it within where your markings are and we're gonna pin. Okay, so once you have it pinned down, you're just going to simply egg stitch. So just egg stitch all the way around until you get to the other side. And after we do that, we're going to do a second row a quarter inch away on the inside of that egg stitch. So we're just going to do the same exact thing a quarter inch away. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now that we have our pocket um, placed onto our side, um, you want to go ahead and do your flap the same exact way we did our flap here. Nothing is different. You put, if you're gonna do them in um, hidden snaps, you do them the same exact way. If you're not gonna do the hidden snaps, you just put them through all, through both layers. And like I said, you attach it the same exact way. So attach your flap and we'll continue. Okay, so next, since we have the pocket attached in the center, we're gonna go ahead and close out that inseam. So with right size facing, you wanna line up that notch and then grab your pins and start pinning. Now, before you do this, you have the option to surge here and then also surge across the front and then you can individually surge um, both sides. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and surge it all together because um, I know this fits pretty good, but if you're not quite sure or if you haven't done a muslin, you want to um, not surge it together just in case you need to let it out. Match up that seam. Okay, so we're just basically gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna start at the top and stitch all the way down using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so now that we're back from the machine, we went ahead and closed out our inseam and I went ahead and surged mine. Um, um, like, like I said, if you, don't, if you haven't fitted your pants on yet or you haven't done a muslin, you want to uh, make sure that these fit before you serge it, okay? So what you want to do is you want to keep one wrong side out and then turn one right side out. 
And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to slide one of them inside the other. And then we're going to pin right where that center crotch area is, right there in the center. And we're going to pin. Now we have three notches to indicate where the back is. So you want to go ahead and pin there too. And then just along that area. Okay. And then we're going to move up here to the front. So we have a notch where the front is. Then there's a, a little dot marking. You want to make sure that's in the center. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pin. Now, if you didn't do your stitching line, uh, the best way to find out how we're going to stitch the front of the um, crotch is to um, measure from the raw edge here. So this is the area right here. So I'm just going to measure that. That's going to be two inches, as you can see from that stitching line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chalk and I'm going to measure in two inches and then we're going to put a little marking. Then we do the same thing right here. And then now that should line up. Okay. So starting at the front, we're going to stitch where our stitch line is. And then when it gets right here, we're going to continue with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to continue all the way up our back. All right, so do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and surged right after I um, stitched. Um, and also, one thing I want to note, I went ahead and took um, this fly piece right here and turned it to the left side, and then I stitched across the top because we're going to be top stitching on the left side. That's where our markings are. So what you want to do now is you want to turn everything right side out. This is the front of our cargo pants. And then next we're gonna head over to the machine and we're just basically going to follow our top stitching. So we're gonna push all of that uh, fly piece to one side on our left side. And we're gonna start here and stitch all the way up where our stitching line is. And then we have, and then as you can see on our pattern piece, we have a a stitching line that goes horizontal right here. And that'll be right up in this area. So let me go ahead and mark that too, because I didn't mark it. Okay. So we're gonna stitch along our stitching line and then right here, and then we'll continue. All right, so once you have that stitching um, on your left side, you wanna go ahead and put this to the side for just a moment. And now we're going to work on our uh, waistband. So the front of the waistband, you have two um, placements for your buttonholes, or you can do eyelets, but you wanna go ahead and do that now before we start stitching. Um, I wanna show you the back. So I went ahead and put interfacing to just have a little bit more stability for my fabric and making those buttonholes. So now that I have that prepared, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these right sides facing. So you wanna make sure that your stitching lines match up from the um, front and back. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this up. And then the same thing on the other side. Okay, so head over to the machine and we're going to stitch one side down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then the other side using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I have both sides stitched down, I went ahead and pressed my seams open. And then now we're just going to fold this on to itself like this, wrong size touching. Now once you have this laying flat, you wanna just give it a good press real quick. Okay, now that you have it pressed, 
we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to stitch. And we're gonna stitch starting at one side seam. We're gonna follow that stitching line all the way around. But when we get about, I say maybe an inch and a half to two inches from the actual original um, starting point, we're gonna back stitch and we're gonna cut our threads because we need room to put our elastic in. So we're gonna do that there and then we're gonna do it again um, on our second stitching line. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna start on one of the side seams. And my back stitch at the beginning also at the end. Okay, so now we're approaching our original stitch. So about two inches. Two inches should give us enough room. Okay, my back stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing, but with our second stitching line. Okay, so now that we've back from the machine and we have our two rows of stitching, but we left about a two inch opening right here on the side seam, we're gonna go ahead and start attaching this to our pants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this upside down with the ends where the front is facing the front of your pants. And we're gonna start matching up the notches. So you should have a notch here in the front that matches up with a notch there. We're gonna pin. Match up that side seam. Okay, so now that we have it all pinned, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So whatever side that you started on, you wanna start on that same exact side. And using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch all the way around. And once we get about two inches away from that original stitch, we're gonna back stitch and cut out the reds. Okay, so now we're gonna start inserting our elastic. Um, I have an opening right here where I'm going to start shifting it through and you need your elastic. So basically you just take this elastic, put it around your waist and seeing what feels comfortable for you. And then once you get it comfortable, you want to make all of them the same exact length. Okay, so once I put my safety pin on, you can go ahead and shift it through. And I'm gonna start on the row that's furthest away from me. Okay, so we're approaching the end. And whenever your elastic on the other end seems like it's gonna go inside, you wanna just pin it like this. So it won't go anywhere. And we're just gonna continue until we come out the end that we went in. Okay. So now that it came out the other end, the same end, we're just going to overlap it like this. Then you wanna give yourself room to stitch. And then we're just basically going to do a stitch up and down, just secure it. You can do a zigzag stitch or you can just do a straight stitch. It doesn't matter because it'll be secure. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back for the machine and the elastic is secured on the inside. And now we're gonna do a 3 eighths of an inch um, elastic into that middle row. And then we're gonna finish up the last row with the other one inch seam allowance. So we're gonna do both of these the same exact way we did the first one. Okay, now that we have all of our elastic added, all three um, sections, we're gonna go ahead and put our drawstring in. Um, usually I just take this and put it in through my buttonholes and then just go all the way around. But if not, you can do it, through, do it the same way, but you wanna make sure that is on the outside so it won't be behind your um, elastic in the center, okay? So once you do that, um, next you're going to just close out your two inch opening or your one inch opening. You just pull, close it out, and then for the stitching line, you just pull and you just stitch the remainder um, inches that you have right there. Okay, so I went ahead and added my jawstrings the same way I did my elastic. And then I closed all the openings I had in my side seam. And last, I surged um, 
that seam on the inside. And last, only thing you have to do is the hem of your pants and you're all done. All right, congratulations, you're all done. I'm so excited to see all your different makes. Be sure to tag us on Instagram at Norris Dental Ford and also at Mimi G Style. All right, see you in the next one.